Hey guys, welcome back to Black Femininity TV. And if you're new here, welcome. If you're familiar with my past videos, I've told you guys so many stories about young artists being ripped off by the music industry because they were either too young or they simply didn't understand the contracts they were signing until it was too late. I've got another story for you guys. American singer Khalees achieved international success with her first two albums, but she ended up being ripped off by her producer friends who she thought gave her a safe space to create music. Khalees Rogers was born and raised in Manhattan's Harlem, New York neighborhood. Her father was a black jazz musician and a professor, while her mother, who was Puerto Rican of Chinese descent, worked as a fashion designer. Khalees drew inspiration from her mother's designs and attended LaGuardia High School of Music and Art and Performing Arts. While studying there, she formed a singing group named BLU, Black Ladies Unite. Khalees never actually aspired to be a recording artist. She was actually more interested in theater. She met the production duo, The Neptunes, composed of Pharrell Williams and Chad Hugo through a mutual friend and her friendship with the producers landed her a record deal with Virgin Records. She said, The album wasn't even the plan, to be honest. It literally just happened. So to be 17 and to be recording an album, I had no understanding or desire for fame. It was really just sort of like, hey, do you want to do an album? Okay, sounds fun, great. Her debut single, Caught Out There, was released on September 20th, 1999 in the United States. The music video was directed by Hype Williams, and the single reached number 54 on Billboard's Hot 100. This song is for all the women out there yeah. that have been lied yeah. to by their men. You would just want me to say, babe, I love you, love you. Yo, he's babe, lying. I what is this I see? No. You don't come home to me. Oh, no. Well, I hate you so much right now. I hate you so much. Her debut album, Kaleidoscope, was produced entirely by the Neptunes and was released in December 1999. But it stalled at number 144 on Billboard's 200 Albums chart. The second and third singles, Good Stuff and Get Along With You, also underperformed in the United States. I seen you when you walk in, still in all the light. But Khalees received a lot of success overseas when the album was released in the United Kingdom in February 2000. Kaleidoscope reached number 43 on the UK Albums Chart and was certified gold by the British phonographic industry with over 100,000 sales. Her debut single, Caught Out There, reached number 4 on the UK Singles Chart, while the singles Good Stuff and Get Along With You reached number 19 and number 51 respectively. Khalees earned herself the Brit Award for International Breakthrough Act and the NME Award for Best R&B Soul Act. But she was frustrated that she was constantly being put in the R&B category because she was black. Khalees never labeled her artistry because she drew inspiration from a variety of genres. She was versatile and her colorful hair and punk style is what separated her from the other black female singers in her era. I mean, I grew up in church and I used to sing in the choir and it's kind of just, I mean, I've always sang in church, so it was like, I think, I don't know if inevitable, but I've always kind of been on a path, you know, and I went to school for theater. I went to LaGuardia Performing Arts. I don't know if you guys know, you know, fame. I know, man. So I went there and, you know, so my, I mean, I've always, this has been, I guess, a work in progress for the past 21 years. People are always trying to put you in a category and say, oh, well, you're this and you're that. and. It's really irrelevant, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Who cares if it's rock or hip hop or R&B? What difference does it make? Do you feel it? You know what I'm saying? If I can make you feel it, then I don't care what you call it. What is this? I see. I don't if you look at my show, I mean, and you, and you look at my album and 
and look at the CDs I have in my CD changer. It doesn't mean anything. It just says this. all these things make up who I am. I don't think I should have to choose or say I'm more this or I'm more that. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Like, I think I have a clear-cut direction as to where it is that I'm going, but I don't think it has to have already been mapped out. I'm not trying to follow in anybody else's footsteps. I'm trying to do my own thing. You know what I mean? I don't think it has to be rock. I don't think it has to be anything. I am what I am. You know what I mean? Either people love me or they hate me. I, I'm not going to sit there and say I'm this just so you can get it. You know? I'm not, I'm not a corporate person. I'm not a writer. I'm not anything other than Khalees. And either you take it or you leave it. You know? Although Kaleidoscope didn't do so well in the U.S., Khalees gained popularity for her distinct rebellious style and from singing the hooks and choruses on popular hip-hop tracks. She teamed up with the Neptunes again to record her second album. But because of a botched rollout, the album was never released in the United States. The sophomore album titled Wonderland was only released in Japan and Europe in October 2001. At the time, Virgin Records was going through changes with the parent company EMI, and as a result, record executives who worked on Wonderland were laid off. The new executives at Virgin Records didn't understand the direction of Wonderland, so the album ended up getting lost during the transition. But it was eventually bootlegged in America. Wonderland was an experimental album that had hip-hop and rock elements. I'm gonna play while I'm here, huh? I gotta get it out, huh? Khalees left Virgin and immediately signed with Arista after the botched album release. In an interview with mp3.com, she said, I left Virgin right when it was released in Europe. So when it was supposed to release in the States, it just kind of fell by the wayside. I think too, a lot of people really didn't understand the music. And you know, they just didn't get it. 18 years later, in 2019, Wonderland was finally made available on streaming platforms in the U.S. In 2003, she recorded her biggest hit to date. The Neptunes produced track, Milkshake, was released in August 2003, and it became one of the best songs of the 2000s. Milkshake charted on Billboard's Hot 100 for 22 weeks and in its 13th week on the chart, it reached its peak at number 3 and stayed there for 5 consecutive weeks. It also spent a week atop the Hot Dance Club Songs chart in December 2003. It did really well overseas, peaking at number 2 on the UK singles chart and reaching the top 5 in Denmark, Norway and Sweden and the top 10 in the Netherlands. Milkshake earned Khalees a Grammy nomination for Best Urban Alternative Performance in 2004. Although she worked with the Neptunes on a number of tracks for her third album, Khalees started working with new producers like Andre 3000, Dallas Austin, and Rock Weiler because she didn't want people to think she relied solely on the Neptunes for production. Her third album, Tasty, was released on December 5, 2003, reaching number 27 on the Billboard 200, with 93,000 copies sold in its first week. The other three singles, Trick Me, In Public, and Millionaire, all charted within the top 20 in the UK, but weren't commercially successful in the US. The album also went platinum in the United Kingdom, selling over 300,000 copies. Khalees joined Britney Spears on her The Onyx Hotel tour as a supporting act. Around this time, she started noticing that she wasn't receiving any royalties from her first two albums. Khalees alleges that the Neptunes, along with their management team and attorneys, lied and tricked her into thinking that they were splitting the royalties three ways with everyone receiving 33% each. Pharrell and Chad Hugo allegedly kept all of the profits and she says she didn't even notice all the publishing money missing from all the sales for her first two projects for a few years because she was living off her touring money. In a 2020 interview with The Guardian, she said, And just the fact that I wasn't poor felt like enough. 
Their argument is, well, you signed it. I'm like, yeah, I signed what I was told, and I was too young and too stupid to double check it. She says that when she started working with other producers for Tasty, Pharrell and Chad came off like they were offended. Neither Chad or Pharrell have addressed the situation. But Khalees says that she saw Pharrell on stage a few years ago at an industry event, and he tried to make it seem as though they were cool or on good terms. She said, He did that thing to me that he's notorious for, which is making a nod from the stage to someone in the audience. So it seems like there's mutual respect, when in reality, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to yell back, you stole all my publishings. So you end up nodding back and everyone thinks everything's great, like whatever. When asked if she would ever work with Pharrell again, she said, um, at that point, there's having faith and there is also just stupidity. In 2005, she started working on her fourth album. She worked with top producers like Raphael Sadiq, Max Martin, Sean Garrett, Polo Dadan, and Scott Storch for the record. And the lead single, Bossy, was released in January 2006. Bossy became her second biggest hit to date, peaking at number 16 on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100. The song was one of the most popular songs of 2006 and went multi-platinum as a cell phone ringtone. By the end of the year, it was certified double platinum in the United States alone. Her fourth album, Khalees Was Here, was released in August that year through Jive Records and reached the top 10 with over 58,000 units sold in its first week. Just like her first three albums, the other singles were only commercially successful overseas and the song Lil Star reached number three in the UK. The album was nominated for Best Contemporary R&B Album at the 2007 Grammy Awards. According to Khalees, Jive Records offered her no support for the album and she was dropped from the label that year. Khalees spent the next several years indulging in her other passion, cooking. During this time, she trained at Le Cordon Bleu Culinary School and made appearances on a few cooking reality shows. She said, After Khalees was here, I was done. I was like, I will never put out another record. I hate this business. I hate all these people. I was in this race that I didn't even realize that I was in. I woke up and 10 years had passed. That was never my plan. My desire was never to put out albums. It was to do musical theater. I realized that there was something else that I adored. There's a point where you think, what else will I do if I don't do music? It becomes your identity when it never should have been. But food ignited a fire in me and I came right back to music because it no longer felt like a job. It was a really powerful thing for me. Cooking inspired Khalees' 2014 album titled Food, which featured song titles like Jerk Ribs, Biscuit and Gravy, and Friday Night Fish Fry. Khalees' style and music has inspired the next generation of Black female punk and alternative artists. Pharrell has even admitted that Khalees had an influence on his personal style. He said, I just signed this girl called Khalees. And back then, all I wore was Ralph Lauren polo, because that was the thing. And Khalees turned to me and said, you've got to get out this box. She introduced me to Prada and Gucci. It was thanks to Khalees I discovered a life outside of monograms. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and like this video, and subscribe to Black Femininity TV for more content.